Baikalia, or Baikalia is a vague geographical term referring to the region around Lake Baikal. It is less common than the concept of Transbaikalia, the area to the east of Lake Baikal. The term Baikalia is loosely defined and has no official definition. The Baikal area has a long history of human habitation. An early known tribe in the area was the Kurikans, forefathers of two ethnic groups, the Beriats and the Yakuts, located in the former Northern Territory of the Xiongnu Confederation. Baikalia was a theater of the Han Xiongnu War, where the armies of the Han dynasty pursued and defeated the Xiongnu forces from the 2nd century BC to the 1st century AD. They recorded that the lake was a huge sea Hanhai, and designated at the North Sea Beihai, of the semi mythical Four Seas. The Kurikans, a Siberian tribe who inhabited the area in the 6th century, gave it a name that translates to much water. Later on, it was called Natural Lake by the Beriats and Rich Lake by the Yakuts. Little was known to Europeans about the lake until Russia expanded into the area in the 17th century. The first Russian explorer to reach Lake Baikal was Kabat Ivanov in 1643. Russian expansion into the Beriat area around Lake Baikal in 1628 to 58 was part of the Russian conquest of Siberia. It was done first by following the Angara River upstream from Yeniseysk, founded 1619, and later by moving south from the Lena River. Russians first heard of the Beriats in 1609 at Tomsk. According to folk tales related a century after the fact, in 1623, Demid Pyanda, who may have been the first Russian to reach the Lena, crossed from the Upper Lena to the Angara and arrived at Yeniseysk, Vakor Savan 1624, and Maxim Pafilyev 1626 and 1627 explored Tungus country on the Lower Angara. To the west, Krasniask on the Upper Yenisei was founded in 1627. A number of ill-documented expeditions explored eastward from Krasniask. In 1628, Pyotr Bekatov first encountered a group of Beriats and collected Yasek tribute from them at the future site of Brask. In 1629, Yakov Krapunov set off from Tomsk to find a rumored silver mine. His men soon began plundering both Russians and natives. They were joined by another band of rioters from Krasniask, but left the Beriat country when they ran short of food. This made it difficult for other Russians to enter the area. In 1631, Maxim Pafilyev built an Ostrog at Brask. The pacification was moderately successful, but in 1634, Brask was destroyed and its garrison killed. In 1635, Brask was restored by a punitive expedition under Radikovsky. In 1638, it was besieged unsuccessfully. In 1638, Pafilyev crossed from the Angara over the Ilam portage to the Lena River and went downstream as far as Olyokminsk. Returning, he sailed up the Vitim River into the area east of Lake Baikal, 1640, where he heard reports of the Amur country. In 1641, Verkolensk was founded on the Upper Lena. In 1643, Kabat Ivanov went further up the Lena and became the first Russian to see Lake Baikal and Olkhorn Island. Half his party under Skorokodov remained on the lake, reached the upper Angara at its northern tip, and wintered on the Barguzin River on the northeast side. In 1644, Ivan Pokobov went up the Angara to Baikal, becoming perhaps the first Russian to use this route, which is difficult because of the rapids. He crossed the lake and explored the lower Selinge River. About 1647, he repeated the trip, obtained guides, and visited a Setsun Khan near Ulan Bator. In 1648, Ivan Galkin built an Ostrog on the Barguzin River which became a center for eastward expansion. In 1652, Vasily Kolesnikov reported from Barguzin that one could reach the Amur country by following the Selenga, Uda, and Kilok rivers to the future sites of Chitter and Nerkinsk. In 1653, Pyotr Bekatov took Kolosinov's route to Lake Urgen west of Chita, and that winter his man Urasov founded Nerkinsk. Next spring, he tried to occupy Nerkinsk, but was forced by his men to join Stefanov on the Amur. The Trans-Siberian Railway was built between 1896 and 1902. Construction of the scenic railway around the southwestern end of Lake Baikal required 200 bridges and 33 tunnels. Until its completion, a train ferry transported railcars across the lake from Port Baikal to Mysavaya for a number of years. 
the lake became the site of the minor engagement between the Czechoslovak Legion and the Red Army in 1918. At times during winter freezes, the lake could be crossed on foot though at risk of frostbite and deadly hypothermia from the cold wind moving unobstructed across flat expanses of ice. In the winter of 1920, the Great Siberian Ice March occurred, when the retreating White Russian Army crossed frozen Lake Baikal. The wind on the exposed lake was so cold, many people died, freezing in place until spring thaw. Beginning in 1956, the impounding of the Irkutsk Dam on the Angara River raised the level of the lake by 1.4 metres 4. 6 feet. <laughs> 